how are you? I'm Dr. Fernando Lemos, coloproctologist from Rio Grande do Sul, Brazil, specialist in diseases of the intestine, rectum, and anus. In this video, I would like to discuss anal sex or activities involving the buttocks. My goal is to provide clarification on certain matters and present relevant clinical cases that will offer valuable explanations. This information is intended for our team and viewers of our channel, Planeta Intestino, who are seeking a comprehensive understanding of this topic. Prior to commencing this video, I would like to offer a highly unique invitation. We possess a completely fresh undertaking, certain updates that we will imminently disclose to the general population. But first, I'd like to invite all of you who are here watching this video. Please share this video as well. We created a Telegram group. Some folks still don't know what Telegram is. Telegram is like a WhatsApp. But you download Telegram in an app on your cell phone. No matter what brand your phone is, go to the App Store and download Telegram. After downloading, click on the link below this video in the video description. So you're gonna be added to this Telegram group called Planeta Intestino. It's a private group, an exclusive group, where I share some information that I don't share here on YouTube or on Facebook. And not even on Instagram, which is something a little more private, a little more intimate, for people who want to have a closer contact with the expert, you know? Please download Telegram, click on the link provided below, and you will be able to join our Telegram group, all right? I also invite non-subscribers to subscribe, join our team, click subscribe here, it's free. And if you want, enjoy it. If you like the video, give it a like, because this is very important for our score here on YouTube, so we can continue doing this work that we came here to do. Before we start talking about anal sex, I want to remind you that we already have two videos here on the channel. Anal Sex Part 1, Myths and Truths. And anal sex part two, which is myths and truths. I would also like to clarify the following. I'm not here to say whether I think it's right or wrong to do the co-onal. I'm not here to say if your belief allows it, if your belief doesn't allow it. Because as an expert, as a coloproctologist, I'm the one who has to speak on the subject. There's a lot of stuff in the media, a lot of stuff on social media, a lot of stuff on television, a lot of stuff in magazines that experts don't make clear. And it's me who must address these issues. So, what I said in this video one and two, I won't bring all this information again here. I invite you to watch. I want to bring here folks, in a very curious and exclusive way. I think there's no video, clearly about this here on YouTube, I think I've never seen, let alone an expert talking about three clinical cases. And by coincidence, these three clinical cases occurred during this week. We are just on Wednesday. I am here in the surgical block of my city. We are already finishing the seventh procedure. Let us proceed. First clinical case. A patient arrived at my office with complaints of recurring urinary tract infections that have been happening repeatedly. So, a guy, young, in his 40s, with UTIs, one after another. Many urine tests with some infections, then he'd take meds. He came and shared two things. I've consulted with five doctors. He's a patient from another town. I've used roughly 10 types of antibiotics. Did you all hear? 10 antibiotics. And I never get better. Dr. Fernando Lemos. And I came here, I want to hear your opinion, even though you're a coloproctologist and not a urologist. Very well. First detail. Women often get urinary tract infections because the vaginal area is close to the anal area, so this contamination is much more likely to happen. But man, because of the urethra, the urethra that is inside the penile part there, it is long, so it is more difficult for an infection to reach the bladder and cause an infection. Whenever there's a urinary tract infection in men, we consider it something that needs to be investigated and much more serious than in women. Started talking, approached, said, gonna bring up topic, intimate, but must ask, that's just me. Do you have, is he married? He said, do you have anal sex with your wife? He said, look, Dr. Fernando Leal, I have a lot of anal sex with my wife. He even brought me a fact, he said, Look, 
Out of the sexual relationships we have in a month, half of them are anal, not vaginal. Very well. And then a little light bulb went off in my head. And I made a request. I asked for a urine test with culture and asked to do the research for worm infestation in the urine. Even the city's laboratory, known as Metaport, the biochemist I contacted initially thought I had made an incorrect request because typically we ask for a parasitological examination of feces, right? That's the usual procedure, isn't it? I wondered if I had requested it wrong. And I said, no, I'm not wrong, no. I want you to do a parasitological examination on the urine. And this patient came to me on Monday, brought me the test, and guessed the surprise of the lab technician and also the patient. No cause of his urinary infection? He had ultrasound. No recurring infection. Doctors requested ultrasound. Maybe polyp, bladder, calculus, or extreme body caused urinary infection. And you're aware of what happened? I ended up getting a urinary tract infection. In other words, worms in the urinary tract. And they managed to isolate the ancylostoma dodonalis worms, which I know doesn't matter to you guys. To put it in other terms, it is a worm infestation. Consequently, I went up to him and asked, do you not use a condom for anal sex, dude? He said, no doc, she's my wife. We've been married long. I said, yeah, that's an issue. And here comes the tip for this clinical case. Don't forget that the penis has a little opening at the tip, which we call the urethra, the straight path. And the anal canal is considered to be the most contaminated region of the entire body. Farther from mouth, more polluted. In short, bladder, stomach more polluted than mouth. Small intestine more contaminated than stomach. Large intestine, colon, more contaminated. And the rectum takes all the current contamination to the rectum. And when they engage in anal intercourse, particularly on multiple occasions, he acquired a worm infection through the urethra, and I went to investigate. It was found that he and his wife were engaging in this activity approximately 10 times. Years since they didn't take any medicine to deworm. And you know, those who are part of our channel intestine planet know that once a year we are forced to do. Must watch video on Giardia, highly interesting and practical. Watch on our channel Intestine Planet for enlightening insights. Recommended for the whole family. All right, treatment for him, dewormer. I am simply going to have to take a high dosage of dewormer. I used two dewormers for him, and I told him, don't worry, now your urinary problem will be eliminated. And starting from today, condom. Every time you'll do anal sex. Something curious, but very interesting. Second case. During this week, I conducted an operation on a woman who had experienced a tear in her anal sphincter muscle. Following anal intercourse, he forcefully tore and cut her anal sphincter, causing severe injury. Tear, we have sphincter. It's a ring, external and internal. We're two there. She tore in pain, bled. We did a surgery on her with some urgency to perform the asphintroplasty, the correction of her sphincter. And can you inform me, doctor, does every instance of anal intercourse result in this? Clearly not. What precisely occurred in the situation of this particular female patient? Let us go. First of all, she did not perform a proper lubrication as required. In one vid, I already explained anal sex needs intense lube with water-based lubricant. Avoid anesthetic lubricant, anesthetic ointment. Use water-based lubricant. There are multiple water-based lubricants on the market, obtainable for purchase at the pharmacy. And the lubrication has to be done generously on the anal area, plentifully on the penile part. It's no use lubricating your penis, that is, you have to lubricate both parts. And her second significant mistake. She commenced her anal intercourse with a position that was completely inappropriate. She started in the missionary position. For those who don't know what the chest way is, it's the kneeling position. One of the videos I explained says rectum, named rectum, is curved, not straight, can only be explained by an expert. The proper position to start anal intercourse is by lying on your side, 
One tip I give to my patients who come to me for information about this is that the tip of the penis should enter towards the person's belly button who is receiving from the passive, who is receiving the coatonal, with the aim of enhancing comfort and pleasure for both partners involved. In the position like chest to chest, kneeling, your most popular one, doggy style, imagine this. Belly button down here, penis right here, it's going to go in like that. It's not anatomical. The correct position to start anal sex is lying on your side, with the penis going towards the belly button area. So, there were two major errors, lack of lubrication and guidance that almost no one has on starting anal intercourse. Doc Fernando Lemos, can you change the position later? You can, but the beginning has to start like this, which is precisely to not tear the rectum in an inappropriate way, okay? And the third case, to finish, a very interesting case for women as well, is a patient who has already had surgery with me for an intestinal problem, and she came to me for a routine exam, a video colonoscopy, and she complained of recurrent vaginal discharge. Visited many gynecologists, diagnosed with colpitis, given cervix and vaginitis info. Another person said they had salpingitis, an infection in the fallopian tubes. Repetition, can't stand using so much cream, no secrin is all. Not improving, talking, what's this? You're not a gynecologist. Went to inquire her. When it's repetitive, I said, come here. Do you have anal sex with your husband? Yeah, I do. And do you ever end up having anal sex and then switch to vaginal sex? And I said, yes, that happens. At times, it happens, yeah. That is the problem. You should never transition from anal sex to vaginal sex. Even if you're using a condom, you have to change the condom. It's important to prioritize safety and hygiene by ensuring a condom change when switching between these sexual activities. If you're gonna make a change, the person has to do vaginal sex first before doing anal sex. Never bring contamination from the anal area to the vaginal area. He was also my spokesperson. Since I'm married, we don't use condoms. We do anal sex, then vaginal sex. It's a total contamination. And that's the problem with it. I'm gonna give you a new treatment for that and never do it again. There is no possible way the order can be like that. These three situations offer valuable lessons that can be learned from. The first one is a man with a repetition infliction for not using a condom during anal sex. A tear needing surgery due to inadequate lubrication and incorrect positioning during anal intercourse. And the third one, a repeated discharge from anal sex first and carrying contamination to the vaginal area. It's an intimate video full of taboos but it has to be addressed with a coloproctologist. Please do not forget to join our Planeta Intestino Telegram group. Down below in the video description, there will be a link for you to click and join, but first you have to download Telegram application. Whoever doesn't follow us yet on Instagram is DRBR. Fernanda Lemos or on Facebook is Planeta Intestino. And for those who are not subscribed to the channel, subscribe. And until the next video.